God is able, God is willing, and you have the power of God inside of you to see yourself healed or anyone around you healed, praise God. You have healing on the inside of you. For sickness and disease, it doesn't belong to you anymore. It's not who you are, amen, because it's not who you were created to be. Hey, we've got a special for you on today's Abundant Life. We're actually going to be dropping in to one of our recent live events. Yeah, I think you're really going to enjoy this. So get ready, get your notebooks out, get your faith switched on and prepare to receive. So I'm going to have everyone stand to your feet and welcome Ashley and Carly Terry. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Praise God if you can. Awesome. I'm Ashley. This is my wife, Carly, as um, Pastor Freddie told you. And uh, we're blessed to be here. It's our first time here in Word Life Church. Praise God. First time. Come on. First time ministry in Chandler. So, do you want to say something, honey? <laughs> so, if you ever watched our TV program, the early ones were very awkward because I used to say, Hi, I'm Ashley Turdis. Blah, blah, blah. Say hello, Carly. And she'd be like, What am I meant to do with that? Like, hello. Hello? So anyway, we changed it up a bit, but why don't you greet the people, baby? All right, thank you. I'm excited to be here. This is our first time here, and uh, we, we have known uh, Pastor Terry Lynn and, and Pastor Freddie for, for a number of years now, and um, they're, just, they're just such a blessing to us. They're awesome. We love your pastors. Can we just say that? We just love your pastors. We really do, and uh, we've had some fun adventures together out there in Colorado, and they've been out many times out there, and so it's just a privilege for us to be here in your home, right? You know, we've heard a lot about it, but here we are in your home, so we're excited to be here, and um, I'm, you know, I'm excited for everything that this year has to, to hold for us, right? And, you know, going into this year, I think when there is a new year that happens, everyone has a word for the year, don't they? Everyone seems every everyone every cat's mother has a has a word for the year. Okay, it usually rhymes. It usually rhymes yeah, usually the rhyme, the rhyming ones are obviously the more anointed, right? If they rhyme, but uh, you know, the, the thing that the Lord has been speaking to to me about coming into twenty four, and this is this is not unique. This is just something that the Lord has shown me. So if you you, you go with God, right? You go with the Holy Spirit. But I feel like this this coming in, I love being at a church at the beginning of the year, right? And I love what your worship leader, I'm sorry I don't know your name, but I love what your, what your worship leader was saying, you know, as you go into a year is how you go out of a year. That's actually very significant. And um, this, that's what the Lord has been showing me for 24, that this is going to be a real year of significance. And in some ways, we get to determine what points in our life are significant, we, we aren't just passive in this. Things don't just happen to us. We have a part to play in how we believe God and what we receive from, from Him and how we walk through whatever this year has to bring. But I do know that this year is going to be a year of significance, a year of, of, of opportunity. And I, and I do believe that there, you know, election years are always a bit crazy anyway, aren't they, right, for whatever reason. I've come, we've lived in America for 16 years now, so we've been through that rodeo a few times now. And we've realized strange things happen in election years for whatever reason. It's great entertainment, actually. You know, when you know Jesus is on the throne, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. It's just a fact, right? Jesus... But, 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 but vote, yes. But, um, you know, you know <laughs> so I do believe that there, are, there is going to be opportunity in this year for all kinds of things. Opportunity to be in faith, opportunity to overcome, opportunity to transition into something new, opportunity to grow in prosperity, opportunities to sow into opportunities, opportunities to receive, opportunities to believe. Amen. They're all going to be there in this year. There's going to be opportunities to be afraid. There's going to be opportunities to get into unbelief. There's going to be opportunities to feel like your world is, you know, completely in chaos and there's nothing you can do about it. Don't buy into the lies. This year is a year of opportunity, of open doors, of opportunity for breakthrough. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I'm like, Lord, bring it on. I'm ready. I'm ready for everything you've got for me. I'm ready for the testimony beyond the tests. I'm, I'm ready for, for, the, for the moments of overcoming. I'm ready for it all. Because God who's in us is greater than he that's in the world. Amen. So be encouraged. It's going to be an exciting year. And we, you've, do you want me to, to talk about some things? What do you want to do with those? What, now, you have a special plan, don't you? Do you want to share that? 
It's all good. All right, and he, he can, Kylie's going to come out and help me minister at the end. Amen. Praise the Lord. So she's a blessing. Amen. Praise God. So um, if you didn't know, how many of you never heard us minister before live? Many people? Okay. Quite a few people. So I um, hate to do this, but, you know, it's good to just introduce yourself and, and tell people what's going on. How many partners? Any partners in the house here? Wow. Look at all these partners. Praise the Lord. Thank you. The partners of Terry Ministries make this possible for us to travel and to go to churches and minister and to minister at conferences and things like that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your partnership. We pray for our partners every day for them to increase. Praise God. It's partly selfish because we think if you increase and all become multimillionaires, then you'll give more to the ministry and we'll be able to get more word out. Praise God. And reach more people. So, but no, we do pray for for our partners to prosper. And uh, Territory's Ministries, we actually, as, as Pastor Freddie kindly said, we worked for Andrew Romack Ministries for many, many years, over 10 years, and uh, never wanted our own ministry. But uh, Andrew and God ganged up on me and, uh, and, and basically said, it's time for you to go out on your own. So we went out on our own. And um, uh, we've been doing this for, I think, five or six years now, full time. And uh, praise God, it's, God's really blessed it. We've had some great opportunities. And God's really blessed it beyond our, our imaginations. Um, we, if you didn't know, we're on television, internationally, across the world. We're on Daystar, TBN, um, GTTV, Andrew's channel, which you should be on. It's great. You should be watching um, some about Faith TV, a bunch of others, anyway, praise the Lord. So anyone seen our Abundant Life television program? Anyone? You should watch it, it costs us tens of thousands of dollars to make, praise God. <laughs> so, so we, we re, and you know what happens with that is people actually watch, they're flicking through the channels. We had a testimony the other day, a lady was in hospital in Arkansas, she was flicking through the channels, just saw our television program, and she said for the first time in her life, she was an elderly lady, for the first time in her life she found out that God was good and it wasn't God who put that sickness on her. She found out that God was good and it wasn't God that was making her sick and it was God's will for her to be healed. And she just watched our 28-minute television program and got healed right there in the hospital. And amen, praise the Lord. She should have been in for months. The doctor said that she should have been in for months, but it took her about two days to convince the doctors to finally let her home. And she went home, she wrote, she said she's never been sick since. So that's what's happening with uh, television. It gets, it gets the word out there, praise God, as well as media like YouTube and Facebook and all that type of stuff. I mean, that's what we do. And then also, you might not know... Um, even some of our partners don't know this, but as well as Terry's Ministries, we also have Global Church Family, which started in 2017, I think. And um, the Lord led us to, to start this. Basically, it's a family of senior pastors. So it's just senior pastors, and we get together once a year, have a retreat in the mountains. How many of you know your pastors need other pastors around them to really pour into them? Some of the pastors are, have been pastoring for decades, so they pour into the younger pastors and vice versa. It's a powerful uh, time. And uh, it's called Global Church Family. We have uh, monthly Zooms and things like that. But it's all built around senior pastors and um, I just want to thank uh, uh, pastors Freddie and Terrell for being a part of that key members of that and being such a blessing in that group of pastors we have pastors amen come on we literally have pastors around the world Africa Europe Australia um, Canada America uh, Texas and some separate country right <laughs> So that's awesome, praise God. So you're part of something a lot bigger than just what's happening here at Word Life Chandler. And online as well, remember, there's people watching all around the world, and, and this will be shared on our channels. So there's people watching all around the world. And I want to encourage you, if you've never been to Word Life, come out to Word Life, make the trip, praise God, and uh, come on out to uh, Word Life Chandler. You're going to be blessed. Here, Pastor Freddie minister, you're going to be super blessed. Praise God. And Terry when she ministers. It's, it's a powerful word, amen, praise God. I've never heard a bad word here every time I've tuned in, praise God. It's always been good. I've always been, amen, amen, praise God. So we love it here amen and we also have our staff some of our staff here tim and and diane at the back give us a wave they're running our, our products for us thank you so much tim and diane are a big blessing amen Praise the Lord. And other pastors in the house as well. We have other pastors and senior leaders here as well. I'm not going to name everyone because I'll forget someone. But anyway, welcome everyone. Praise the Lord. So grab your Bibles. I was actually going to go one direction. And then Pastor Freddie type of uh, spoiled it for me with his word from the Lord. <laughs> and I was like, Holy Spirit was like, go. I was like, yes, sir. I'll follow that. Amen. Uh, so turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. Let's pick up where uh, Pastor Freddie started. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I want to look at this real quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And... Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and let's look at, um, let's start, I'm just going to jump into verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And this is, I believe, one of the best New Testament definitions of uh, quote unquote what it means to be prosperous. Okay? Now, prosperity is, is something that's very. Um, you know, can be very controversial, can cause a lot of issues. And in fact, I was in a, preaching in a church in Africa uh, fairly recently, and the pastor called me the night before and said, actually, we've got a problem. They said, uh, we've got some protesters about me. You know, they're not, they're not happy about uh, me having you in, in my church preaching, and we've got some protesters. I thought, this is going to be awesome, like placards and cars upside down on fire and all that type of thing. I thought, this is going to be, this is great. 
And uh, it turned out to be like a couple of people on Facebook upset. It wasn't really as spectacular as I expected. But here's what they said. They said, don't bring this American prosperity gospel teacher to your church. Okay, we're in Africa. Do not bring this. We have we, we love Africa. We, get, we have offices actually in Africa, South Africa. So we go there very regularly. But this is one of our earlier trips to South Africa. And they said, don't bring this prosperity gospel teacher to your church, American. So I got up there and I thought this would be fun. So I started preaching and half the church was like, he doesn't sound American. So, it's like, uh, so I said, first of all, I'm not from America. So I'm from England. And English do not t- talk about money. That's like their big thing. Okay, if you, any English in the house? Praise the Lord. I can just, no, anyway. <laughs> You say what I want now. But anyway, English people don't talk about money. It's very like, you know, a prim and proper and all that. And anyway, so I, I said, oh, I'm, you know, I'm from England. So that type of got them a bit off guard. They were like, we thought you was an American. And then I said, I said, well, I live in America, but I'm, I'm actually English. I'm actually American citizen now is where we got our citizenship. Cost us tens of thousands of dollars to be American citizens. So, but it was the best deal I've ever made in my life, praise God. So I'm happy to be American. But... So, um, and then I started teaching. The first thing I said, I said, everybody, I want you to hear this. Big church. I said... The prosperity gospel's a lie. And you can see everyone like, even the pastor was like, what's he saying? And I said, there's only one gospel. There's the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It just so happens that one of the side effects is prosperity. Just like the side effects is also healing and peace and righteousness and sanctification and all these good things, praise God. Now you can, you can have it all if you want. I'd take it all because Jesus paid for it all. But there's a lot of Christians out there, so we don't, we don't air it. Have people abused the quote unquote prosperity message? Of course they have. But that doesn't mean we should just, I don't know if you say this in, in America, but throw the baby out with the bathwater. Did you say that in America? Yeah, okay. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and this is the ver- verse 10, that, um, uh, where ve- Freddie was at the, at the offering that really just blessed me. And that is, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. This is God's definition of prosperity. When you have all your needs met all the time, but it doesn't just end there. You have extra to be able to give. you be able to give to good works. And everybody, if you're born again today, if you're not born again, we can help you with that. Praise God. You need to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And we can help you with that. If you're watching online, contact Word Life. We'd love to help you with the most important decision you'll ever make. But I'm assuming everyone here has given their life to Jesus. You, as, as a born again believer, praise God, you have the, in you the nature to be generous and you want to give and help people. Well, if you want to help people, you need money. So right there, that is God's definition of quote unquote prosperity. Amen. Having all your needs met. How many of you want all your needs met all the time and also an abundance, not just a little bit, but abundance left over so that you can give to every good work. Every time you see someone in need, every time you see a church project, every time you see something happening, you can give. Praise God. I was going to do this at the beginning, but I'll just do this as I go, I guess, because it's type of fitting. But if you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. So that was 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, the other way around. Second Corinthians chapters 8 and chapters 9 are all talking about finances. The Apostle Paul's talking about money, moolah, bread, whatever you want to call it. He's talking about offerings. He's talking about giving and receiving. He's talking about um, stewardship. So Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 is such a powerful verse. And right here it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a grace thing. This is God's free gift. Have you know that you have been saved by grace through faith, amen? So God's part is already done. Jesus came down to earth. I say Jesus was grace personified. He came down to earth and provided everything you'll ever need. He took away all your bad things and gave you all his good things. It's, a, it's, a, it's an almost too good to be true deal. That's the gospel, amen? He took your sin, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for you on the cross. Why? So that you could become the righteous of God. You took on his righteousness. He took away your sin. It's a great deal. First Peter 2.24, he took stripes on his back. Why? So that you could be healed. He took your sickness and your suffering in your body so that you could be completely healed. You could take on his health and healing. He took anxiety. He was so anxious at one point that he was sweating drops of blood. He was so anxious. Why? So that you could take on his peace of mind, mental stability, mental perfect mental health. And it's exactly the same with finances. It says right here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, yet though he was rich, yet for your sakes, whose sakes? Our sakes. He became poor. Why? So that us, through his poverty, might be made rich. That's a verse right there. And people get offended. That Actually, don't say rich in church. Don't say that word. Well, a little while ago, the Lord led me to write a book called God Wants You Rich. <laughs> it's like, I was like, Lord, can we reason together? Maybe I could call it like, God wants you prosperous, 
God wants you blessed. God would like you, you know, to, to have more than enough. He said, no, he said, read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. It says rich. And if you read that word rich and study it out, it means substance. It means money. It means things. Every time the word rich is used there, it's, it's talking about stuff. God wants us rich. What's God's definition of rich? To have your needs met, but also be able to help other people. Enough and extra, praise God, enough and extra. So that's, uh, this is guaranteed to get rid of all the, uh, the, the religion out of your house, praise God. If you've got any religious bones, that will make it. If you just twinged when you heard that, then you need this book. I've got Jesse Duplantis. Who better than, than Pastor Dr. Jesse Duplantis to write the foreword? He loved it, and he, and he read the foreword. So I'll give this to someone. Who wants this book? Can I give this to someone? Who wants to give, go ahead. Who's going to run that? Thank you, my friend. Give that to someone who looks like they're really upset with me talking about being rich in church. Praise God. While I'm here, I might as well do this as well. We have some other things out there. We have uh, Fearless. This is our... Well, let me say this before I do this. Um, I want to do this... Um, I told you you messed my message up, Freddie. It's going to be good. <laughs> the Holy Ghost messed it up. But um, this is what I want to do today. I want to do something for this church. I want, to, I want you to... to uh, this is a temporary location, right? I don't know if you know that. You, you want your own place, amen? So we want to start a building fund today. And we just want to say, you know, we, Carly and I are going to put in $1,000 just to get you started into your building fund. And then everything you buy at the back there, so we have all these books back here. Anything you buy at the back, one hundred, we'll donate all the books. And we'll donate our staff's time and everything. But everything you buy back there, we're going to give towards this building fund. And we believe we're going to get this building fund going. And you know what will happen is it will start increasing, praise God. So, so after the service, make sure you go back there and buy a bunch of stuff. You can pay like $100 for a book. And 100% of it will go to the building fund. So let's get this going because I believe Word Life is going to have their own place. And it's going to increase, praise God, and have great things coming, praise God. Amen. So that's what we're doing this morning. So... Um, get some of these books. This is fearless. If you've got fear in your life, any fear of lack, fear of pandemics, pandemics, wherever they are, fear of, fear of anything in your life, you need this. Carly wrote this during the pandemic and it, and it really ministered to people. This is really going to help you. How you can break the habit of fear. How do you know fear is like the opposite of faith? Fear to, is like to the devil what, what faith is to God. So we need to not fear, apart from a holy fear of the Lord, but not, not, not unhealthy fear, praise God. So who wants to fear? Who's, who's full of fear? Tim, give that to someone who's so scared they won't raise their hand. Praise the Lord. <laughs> And then lastly, I want to talk about, uh, yeah? Oh, yeah, Carly just found out. This was yesterday. Yesterday she found out a lady read that book. Was it a spouse gave it to her? Yeah, her husband gave her that book. He said, read this book. It's on fear. She said, well, I want to learn about, you know. It was you. Pray you got born again through that. Come on. This lady got born again through that book. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. So you read that book and got born again. Can you come up here a second? Come up here. I won't embarrass you, I promise. I promise. Come on. <laughs> You've learned now not to yell out. Come right here. What's your name? Rachel. Rachel. What happened? Um, so it was Christmas time, and uh, my husband's like, you should read this book while we're at Grandma's house. I'm like, okay, you know. And the cover looked intriguing, you know, and I thought, well. The bear, there's like a bear yeah. dying on the yeah. No bears were hurt doing that. No. And I thought, you know, I had just become a mother, and I had a lot of fear around it. And it, I opened it up, and found God's word in it and found Jesus in it. And, you know, I really was just, I really wanted to be fearless. So that's why I opened up the book and I became fearless with Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Thank you, Rachel. That's great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? Thank you, Jesus. Any partners here, I blame you for testimonies like that. Praise God. Isn't that great? These things happen. These resources go out and people get, people's lives get affected. This was just, we found about, out about this yesterday. Praise God. That's powerful. And we have testimonies of people getting born again and, and getting set free and healed all the time. It's powerful. This is, Car um, uh, Carly wrote this, but this is about our daughter, Hannah. Have you uh, seen the story of our daughter, Hannah? She was, she was given one week to live and, and this was 18 years ago. And uh, we, we came to a meeting like this where we heard the word, she got prayed for, and she got miraculously healed right then and there. And the doctors had given up hope on her. They sent her home to die. And um, that was 18 years ago. She never had one more symptom and no more doctor's treatment. She's 100% well and healthy. She's, uh, she, uh, she was so bad, she was the size of, when she was three years old, she was the size of a nine-month-old baby. She was in a stroller. She, she was in diapers. She was three years old. Most of her hair had fallen out. And now she's 100% healthy. She's grown. She's all her hair's back. She's, she's 100%. She got married. She got married last year. Was it last year? 2022, she got married. It broke my heart. To a good man, a good Caris Bible College graduate. So a good man. 
But then nine months later, they gave me a baby. So now we're grandparents. I'm very happy, praise God. So this is, this is a book about Hannah, and it's about how she believed God. It's called Hannah and the Beanstalk. This is really good if you want to uh, uh, read it to kids and stuff. You have kids or grandkids. It's also a great book you can give away to people because people get, read this, and then they get born again, praise God. So this is Hannah. Anyone got kids or grandkids or no kids or like kids or want kids? Give that to someone, Tim. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So. Get a bunch of stuff so we can, uh, we can sow into this building fund and make sure Word Life Church has an abundance in their building fund to get their own building, praise God, amen? That's what we're going to do. So that's God's definition of being rich, is helping others, having enough, having extra to help others, praise God. But how many you know, let me ask you this, how many of you are givers in here? How many of you give here, praise God? So you understand, this is the nice thing about coming to a church like this. I haven't got to teach you about giving, I haven't got to teach you about the basics, I haven't got to teach you about all those things, because you're getting good words here. You know the truth of the, the, the word. You're getting taught by your parents pastors you know the word i ain't got to do any plowing it's awesome praise god but what i'm going to do today is i'm going to i'm going to do something i'm going to call this it's a tough and interesting name i'm going to call it i'm going to call it harvest helper you've heard of hamburger helper right this is harvest helper so some of us no show of hands i've been there too and sometimes we still have these seasons where you sow and you believe god and you believe the word but you don't see the harvest is that fair to say? You're like, how comes I'm not seeing that word that Pastor Freddie brought this morning? How comes I'm not seeing that 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8? How comes I'm not seeing it, all my needs met? How comes my month is longer than my paycheck? How comes I'm not able to give when I want to give? I so want to give into the now Word Life uh, um, building fund, praise God. I so want to give into good ministries like Andrew Oak Ministries or whatever. I so want to give into these things, but I haven't got extra to do that. You haven't seen your harvest. I'm calling this harvest helper. Okay, now have you know, this is not works. Jesus has paid the price. He's done it all for us. But his, his part by grace has been done, but our part by faith still has to be done. It's not automatic. If it was automatic, everybody would be saved, everybody would be healed. No, it's our choice. And there's certain things we do by faith to receive the things of God. There's certain things we do by faith. James says faith without works or faith without corresponding actions is dead, meaning this. God's already done it all. Are we going to be able to receive it? So faith is the receiving part. And this is called Harvest Helper to help us receive our harvest. Some things we can do to receive our harvest. Remember, you're not working for your harvest. It's already done. You're working to receive it. You're laboring for that rest. You're working out how you can receive it, how you can tune yourself into receiving it. So I've just got a few points here I want to make on, on how you can help your harvest come about. Because, you know, it's all very well saying we're spiritually blessed, which we are. I tell people there's only two types of Christians. In fact, Andrew Womack quoted me. It was one of the greatest days of my life. <laughs> like, I was in the UK and he said, it's like Ashley says. And I was like, Andrew Womack's quoting me. I was, like, this is, I was like elbowing Carly, she's still got bruises. I'm like, this is, you know, maybe it's just me, but I was type of proud of that. And he said, uh, he said, there's only two types of Christians. This is what I say. Now I'm quoting Andrew, quoting me. But anyway, there's only two types of Christians. And I probably got it from someone else, to be fair. I mean, I, there's nothing new under the sun, right? So, but there's only two types of Christians. Those who are born again and are blessed and believe it. And those who are born again and are blessed and don't believe it. Meaning this, when you got born again, you automatically got blessed. You automatically become prosperous. The real you, the spirit you is prosperous already. Just like the real you is healed, the real you is at peace, the real you is righteous. But our actions sometimes in our soul and our flesh don't reflect that. And we need it in the physical realm. You know, for instance, our ministry, it costs us money to go around and do these things. We can't go up to United Airlines and just give them a hug. They want money to get on that plane. We can't go to Daystar Television and TBN Television and say, we'll just put us on for free. No, they need, they need money to be able to have airtime. It, it costs money to do these things. So we need to understand how can we get this harvest out, if you like. How can we have some help with our harvest, amen? The first thing I've got here, we're talking about helping your harvest come about, harvest helper. The first thing I've got here is what are you speaking? Now, here's the problem in our circles. Well, Ashley, you're actually talking about confession police. All my feet are killing me. Don't speak it out. I had one person say once, it looked outside, he said, I think it's going to rain. And about three people said, don't speak it out, brother. I'm like, don't like this. Anyway, so we're not talking about this superstition. What we're talking about is Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So really, when you're speaking, you're actually speaking out what you believe. If you're really in a, in, you know, squeezed in a situation, you're going to start speaking out what you believe. And also, it's double because when you speak something out, you trust your own voice more than anyone else's. So when you say something, you believe it more than anyone else. It's amazing. I won't go too far with this, but that's why sometimes we don't see our prayers answered when we rebuke symptoms in our body. Because our, our, our body's like, well, you've said 15 things today already that aren't true. You said you told that person that you love them or you're going to pray for them or you'd love to go to their party, but you can't make it. 
Your wife said, your wife said, do I look good in this dress? I mean, you said a lot of things that aren't true today. <laughs> that aren't true today. So how comes I should believe you now when you say pain go? So it's very important how we speak, how we talk. It reveals what we believe and also it can shape what we believe. It's very important. One time we, was, uh, we had a big house in Colorado, so we had some people stay with us. Now we have a small house and so no one can stay with us. <laughs> It's not true, but anyway, we were empty nesters. So, but at the time, we had a bigger house, and we had people stay with us. One was a friend of ours. Their son was coming to Caris Bible College, and um, he stayed with us. I think he was like 17 years old. And then we also had an older lady who was in her 70s who was our nanny because we had little kids at the time. Now they're all grown and left, but they were little at the time. So we had this 70-year-old nanny, 17-year-old teenager. And we would go to Caris together in the, in the suburban at the time. You know, so we've got a full, full truck full of people. And I'm driving. I'm, I can hear them as I'm driving. And the 70 year olds going, oh, that time of year again, my arthritis is coming back, and I know I'm going to get flu this year. I mean, that, that, I'm just speaking sickness, sickness, sickness all the time. This always happens to me. Whenever something's going around, I get it. And they're all born again, right? And then the 17 year olds like, I never have any money. I can never, even, every time I try and get a job, I can never get a job. They never, they never want to hire me. I never get any money. Things are going up. Gas prices are going up. And they're both just spewing all the time. I'm like, it's in the end. I pulled the car over. I said, listen, <laughs> like kids. I was like, listen. I said, you live in my house now. You're part of my household. And in my household, the Terridez household, we don't speak lack and we don't speak sickness. I said, we may be poor sometimes. We may not have enough money, but we don't identify with, be- with poverty. We don't identify with lack. We may be sick sometimes. We may have pain in our body. We may have disease come against us, but we don't identify with someone who's sick. So from now on, I said, in my house, we're not going to speak lack and we're not going to speak sickness. Do you understand? They're like, yes, sir. <laughs> I'm like, but it's so important, you know, how many of us find ourselves saying things, you know, well, I'm not, I'm not like one of those rich people, or, you know, oh, this, the economy's going down, I'm never going to make it, or I think my, my business is going under. We say things like this, we say things like, well, money doesn't grow on trees. Well, what's money made of? Paper. Where does paper come from? Trees. I mean, it's just a lie, okay? I mean, it's like, oh, I never get ahead. I never, I never get a lucky break. I never get ahead. All these things just speaking out, your natural mind is just going to follow those things. I found myself the other day, this is just the other day, kept saying, well, I don't know. I don't know. And they said, no, that's not true. I've got the mind of Christ. I know all things. I do know. I might not know in my natural mind, but I know in my spirit. I do know all things. I'm, not, I'm going to stop saying, well, I don't know. I said, I do know. Show me, Lord. So it's important how we speak out. And some people say, well, actually, this is, sounds like faking it till you're making it. No, the real you is prosperous. So identify with the real you in the spirit. We have confession cards you can get that will teach you, go through who you are. So you can look, at your, you can look in the mirror and see how your flesh is doing. See how your hair is, see how your makeup is, you know, guys and girls sometimes. No, you know, you can see what you look like in the mirror. You can see how your flesh is in the mirror. You can see what your soul's like by your feelings. How do you feel? Am I sad, happy, am I lonely? You can, that's your soul. But the only way you can show, you can really tell who your spirit is, the only way you can show who your spirit is, is by the Word of God. The Word of God's a mirror to your spirit. So we have to get into the Word and say, oh, this is who I am. I might feel like this. I may look like this, but this is the real me. See, Joseph was put in prison. In fact, he was put down. First of all, he was told he was prosperous. His father told him he was prosperous, and he believed that. And then he got thrown down a pit and sold as a slave. But he still believed he was prosperous. And they put him on on an auction block. You can find this in Genesis 39. They put him on an auction block, basically with a loincloth or naked. And it says the Lord looked at him and saw he was a prosperous man. Then he got sold into Potiphar's house, and Potiphar used him as a slave. And he he got promoted all the way up to the ruler of his house. And it said because the Lord was with him. And then he got falsely accused. You know the story? He got thrown into prison. So now he's gone from being the ruler of Potiphar's house, one of the greatest uh, leaders of the time in Egypt. Now he's back in prison again. What happened? He didn't say, oh, woe with me. It's not working. No, he kept seeing himself successful. He kept seeing himself prosperous because God was with him. That was the whole thing. He said God was with him. So what happened? He became the ruler of the prison. And he said he went into the prisoners. He said he saw that one of them was, was sad. He saw the prison was sad. That tells me two things. One, under Joseph's watch, people weren't that sad, even though they were prisoners. So he must have really been encouraging. And the second thing was, he noticed that they were sad. So he took time to notice people. And guess what happened? He interpreted their dreams, and he got promoted to being the second most powerful man in the world, and he ended up working for Pharaoh. But the thing with Joseph was, he believed God was with him. He saw himself prosperous, so the circumstances changed. The opposite of that is you can get like a lottery winner. I'm not condemning you if you play the lottery. If, as long as you tithed the winnings to word life. <laughs> I had a guy, when I was, a youth, I, used to, I was a full-time youth pastor back in the day when I was like 20 years old, and there was a guy, an old guy, and he kept saying to me, when I win the lottery, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a bunch of it to the youth group, and we need money. 
And I was like, that's good. But deep down, I was like, you shouldn't play the lottery. It's type of, I don't really agree with gambling. But anyway, he said, he came in one day and he said, I won the lottery. So I was like, how much? And I was like joking, thinking like, you know, is it $20, is it $100? And I said, how many millions? He said, oh, only three quarters of a million. I went, oh. I said, so the youth group needs some new equipment. <laughs> anyway, all of a sudden, even the pastor, all of a sudden, gambling wasn't such a problem. We will, we, we will sanctify that money for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know why I got off on that. Praise the Lord. I'm, you're going to get a lot of complaints about this one, Freddie. I'm, I'm sorry. Address your complaints to Word Life Church. Amen. So, he can fix it next week. But anyway, my point being, lottery winners, you know that 90% of lottery winners 10 years later are worse off than before they won the lottery. Do you know why? Because they saw themselves poor. That's why they played the lottery. They thought, well, if I give a dollar, if I pay a dollar, I might get $100 million. That's like, they actually call it, this is no offense, if you pay the lottery, I'm not against you at all, but this is what, they call it a poor tax because only really people with a poverty mindset will believe they can put a dollar down and get a hundred million dollars. Wealthy people, people with a prosperous mindset believe, you know what, you invest to increase, you don't gamble to increase. And anyway, my point being is how do you see yourself and how you see yourself is how you're going to speak about yourself. What's your self-talk like? How are you, are you believing those lies that you can't get ahead? Listen, I don't care if the economy goes up, down or sideways in America or in the world. We live off of God's economy. Philippians 4.19 says, My God will supply your needs according to his riches in glory. We live off of God's economy, and God's economy is having no recessions, no depressions. You can make money. Body of Christ, listen to me. You can make money. You can be prosperous in any economy, up, down, or sideways. Read the Bible. People made money in famines. People made money in abundance. People made money when nothing was happening in the markets. So don't be in fear and don't speak these lies out. I don't know what the economy is going to do. The economy is going to be good for you, whichever way it goes, because you live with God's economy. You're citizens of heaven now. You belong to God. You don't belong to, to this earth. You belong to God. When you got born again, you know, you changed address. You got taken out of the kingdom of darkness and put into the kingdom of the son of his love. Meaning this, now you live with heaven's economy. And heaven's economy is very different from the world's economy. There's no recessions, praise God. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to be great. So don't believe those lies. Make sure that you're actually speaking the truth and force yourself to do this. Sometimes you might feel like a little weird doing it, but it's okay. If I, if I gave you a prescription and said, do this, and this is going to give you X amount of money, you'd do it, right? Well, you do this. I, I'm telling you, I can't guarantee how much it's going to be, but it's going to increase you if you'll start seeing yourself differently and start speaking differently over yourselves. I wake up in the morning and say, I thank you, Lord. I'm blessed. I thank God I'm healthy. I thank God I'm whole. I thank God good things are happening to me. Good things happening to my family. Good things happening to my ministers. Good things happening to my, to my ministry. Good things are happening to me. And I thank you, Lord, that everything I touch prospers. Why do I say that? Because that's what the Word tells me. The Word tells me everything I touch prospers. And I start speaking those things out. And my natural mind is like starting to believe it now. And it's looking for the deals rather than saying, I never get ahead. Well, if you just say to yourself, I never get ahead, I never find a deal. I never get a quote-unquote lucky break, then your natural mind is just going to be like, well, there's no, no chance we're going to make it. So things like we can't afford it. And I understand, I'm sensitive. There's times where people, you know, you literally can't afford things. But instead of just saying, like, we can't afford it, how about we say, like, how could we afford it? Or how could we make this work? Or how could we get these resources? There's ways of doing it. My daughter was, I don't know, 12 years old. She said, I want to do dog walking. I want to walk the neighbor's dog. She said, but I need this leash. And there's seven, it's like a leash with like seven leashes. And it was $11 on Amazon. That's what it was. And I almost gave her the money. And the Lord said, no, let her figure it out. I said, Hannah, you're going to have to find out how to get the money for that. She said, well, I haven't got the money right now. She learned not to say, I can't afford it. She said, I haven't got the money right now. I said, well, you pray and you think how you could afford that. And I'll be back later. So when I came back, she gave me $11, screwed up. And I said, what did you do? And it took her one day. She said, I made organic dog treats in the kitchen. She used all our eggs and flour. We didn't charge her for the, it was a, her kitchen was a mess. Kitchen was a mess. Mum's kitchen was destroyed, but she made organic dog treats, baked them, put them in Ziploc bags, and took them to the neighbors and sold them for a dollar a time. When she, when she sold 11 bags, she came back and gave me the $11. So I'm telling you, we, can th we need to think, like, how can we afford something rather than we can't afford it, okay? It shuts, it shuts things down, praise God. God has given us, God's given you the power to get wealth. You know that, right? Deuteronomy 8.18. One of my favorite verses, Deuteronomy 8.18 says, Do not forget the Lord your God, for it's he who gives you the power to get wealth. He's given you the power to get wealth. Now, why is he giving you that power to get wealth? Not just to lavish it upon yourself, but it says so that he can establish his covenant. God wants to establish his covenant right here in Arizona. He wants to establish it in America. He wants to establish it through the world. He wants to establish it in your family. How many of you like to change your family tree so that people don't have the struggles that you've had before? Amen. You can do that. He's given you the power to get wealth. He doesn't give us wealth directly. Money doesn't you know, uh, uh, rain from heaven. It's only happened to me one time. I opened a book once and $20 bill fell out and hit me. I was like, 
and money is raining from heaven. Then I realized someone put it in there to bless me. But money doesn't usually rain from heaven. That's not how God works. God gives you the power to get wealth. My second favorite verse in Deuteronomy is Deuteronomy 28.8. And in Deuteronomy 28, it says, uh, he will command the blessing on your storehouses and all to which you put your hands. In fact, when I had my first book out, they asked me to sign it. I didn't know how to sign a book. They gave me the book and I just put my name in it and they looked a bit disappointed. And I said, what's wrong? And they said, well, you meant to put something inspiring, like a Bible verse or something. Do something inspiring. So I thought, well, I like Deuteronomy 8, 18. That's a really good verse. I also like Deuteronomy 28, 8. That's a really good verse. So I was like, do I do Deuteronomy 8, 18 or Deuteronomy 28, 18? Eight. So I put in Deuteronomy 28.18 by mistake. Ashley told us, Deuteronomy 28.18. Now, Deuteronomy 28.18 says you're cursed in everything you do. <laughs> so, so if you got one of those books, those first five or six books I signed, I apologize, bring it back for a refund. Can you imagine someone get home? I just come back from Brother Ashley's conference. Honey, get the kids, gather around. Brother Ashley wrote in our book, and he wrote a prophetic word. This is going to be the word over our family. Little Johnny, get the Bible. Read this out, Deuteronomy 28, 18. Read it out, little Johnny. Read it out. Everyone loud, nice and loud is going to hear. You are cursed. Because like... So anyway, but what I'm saying is, is, is you've got the power to get wealth, and Deuteronomy 28, 8 says everything you put your hand to prospers. It's not so important what you do. It's how you do it. It's with that mindset. Whatever you do, you can have a regular job. You could do you, whatever. You could be minimum wage. If you had the right mindset, I'm telling you. Our son Josh was working minimum wage at a coffee house, Starbucks coffee house. I hate to say the name, but there you go. You can edit that out. But Starbucks Coffee House, and he was going to Caris Bible College at the same time, and the pandemic hit. And they said, well, you can go home, and we're going to pay you full. And he said, well, why do I get paid to go home? He said, well, we're shutting down for COVID. And he said, well, can I still work? And they said, well, there's only going to be two branches open in the whole of Colorado Springs. I think there's 25 Starbucks. We've got a problem, obviously, in Colorado. But there's 25 Starbucks just in, Co in the Springs. He said, they're only going to keep two stores open. So Josh said to the manager, well, if they keep our store open, I want to work. And they said, you don't have to. You can go home and, and, and get paid full. And he said, no, they keep our store open. I want to work. That was his mentality. So guess what? Out of the 25 stores, his store stayed open. So he said, I want to work. So they said, well, we just found out from corporate, cool because you're willing to work, we're going to give you, quote, unquote, danger pay during the, during the pandemic. So he got like another third of, so now he's not on minimum wage. Now his, his hourly wage has gone right up. Then no one else went to work. So he got these really long shifts, which he loved. Got lots of work. And then, because all the other Starbucks are shut down, his drive through was constantly, I mean constantly, backed up. There was never a time when those people got... And, because during COVID, I don't know if you remember this, everyone felt generous for some reason. Do you remember that? Everyone was like tipping people $20 and, and $50 and stuff. So he made more money during that season. I mean, he made so much money, paid his tuition, cash, and everything else. I mean, he just made a ton of money. Why? Because he believed wherever he put his hands to prospers. This will work in minimum wage. This will work in business. This will work in investments. This will work in any area. So start speaking that out. Start believing what you have, praise God. Okay, moving along here. I've got to move along. The second thing I've got here, we're talking about harvest helpers. We're talking about how you can help your harvest come about, how you can see prosperity in your everyday life. The second thing I've got here is don't eat the seed you have. Don't eat your seed. And don't curse your seed. Don't, just look after your seed. However you want to write that down. <laughs> but let's look at this real quickly. Feeding the 5,000. You all know this story. It's in all four Gospels. I'll give you the paraphrase version. Well, I'll read it real quickly. Let's go to, let's do um, Matthew's version. Uh, feeding the 5,000. This was the original all-you-can-eat buffet. When we came to America, they did not, we, in England, they did not have all-you-can-eat buffets. So I came here and they're like, I said, you want to tell me I can go back up again and get another plate? They said, yes, you can, sir. I said, how many times can I do this? They said, as many times as you want. I was like, I'm going to put these people out of business. But I found out after about five or six plates, you can't eat no more. And it's like... It's, it's difficult, but um, here in, here in uh, 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 Matthew 14, let's pick it up, um, verse 15. Matthew 14, verse 15. When it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Let me tell you, church, a lot of times people will tell you it's too late and it's not the right place. You're in the wrong place, you're too old, whatever it is. This is a bad report. It's a deserted place and the hour is already late. So the natural circumstances were against them here. That's a great place to be when you're with God. Because, you know, one of the greatest verses is, but God. Amen. It would be finished if it wasn't for God, but God. But we're not, we're not without God. We have God. And all things are possible for those who believe. Amen. So right here he said, send the multitudes away that they may go to the villages and buy themselves something to eat. Verse 16 in Matthew 14, verse 16. Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. Jesus was trying to empower his disciples all the time. I don't know if you know this. This is a little rabbit trap. I'm just going to say it. Jesus was trying to empower his disciples to do the work of the ministry. 
If you read the Gospels, sometimes we miss this. He was trying to empower his disciples. And every time these disciples didn't step up and rebuke the wind and waves, or didn't step up and do the feeding of the 5,000, he was a little bit like disappointed. Like, oh, come on, guys. I've been with you three years. I've been showing you how to do this stuff. I want you to do it. And you know what? I think God's the same with us now. I think right now we're meant to be doing the work of the ministry. And let me just say this. This is a complete rabbit trail, but I feel the Holy Spirit leading me this way. You know, Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, it talks about the fivefold ministers. It talks about the, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And it says that Jesus set some in, in those offices, right? And I believe that. I totally believe that. But here's where we've got it backwards. We think those some pulpit positions, the people that, that minister, quote-unquote, full-time, or that's their, that's their uh, calling, if you like, is to minister full-time, they're the ones that do all the work of the ministry, and we'll just watch them eat popcorn and be like, wow, this is amazing. You know, if someone was sick today... A lot of you would have more, more um, trust or, what would you say, more confidence. You'd be more confident for Pastor Freddie or Terrell to pray for them than for you to pray for them. Now, there's nothing wrong with bringing people to church. It's great. Bring people to church, have the pastors pray for them. But let me tell you, God wants you to be able to pray for the sick. He says, believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. So the, really, the fivefold ministry, if you read Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, it says the reason why Jesus put these offices in place, these fivefold office gifts in place, it says for the equipping of the saints. Now, who are the saints? You are. If you're born again today, every one of you is a saint. You might say, Ashley, you didn't see me drive in on the 202 today. I'm not a saint. Well, that's in your flesh. In the spirit, you're a saint. Every one of you are a saint now, and that means that you are being equipped for the work of the ministry. Why? For the perfecting of the body. We are meant to do the work of the ministry, every single one of you. I don't care what you do during the day. I don't care if you're retired, if you're a full-time business owner, if you're employed, student, whatever you are. You are called to do the work of the ministry. You're the hands and feet of Jesus, and you can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. You can fly in the spiritual gifts. You can do this stuff in your family, you can do it in your workplace, in your school, wherever you are, you can do the work of the ministry. And really the fivefold ministers are there to coach you, equip you, encourage you, and set you on fire so you can go and do the work of the ministry, praise God. You're the ones that are doing the work of the ministry. We need fivefold ministers, we need leadership, we need structure and authority, that's God's a God of order. But don't ever think that only those people can do the ministry and you just have to watch. Or maybe if you're like really good, you know, you could give towards it. Now, you're meant to do the work of the ministry. I'm, I'm, equi- I'm telling you, each one of you can be equipped to do the work of the ministry. And you come to a church like Word Life, and week after week, you're going to get more equipped and more equipped and more confident in the Word, more confident in praying for people, more confident in flowing in the spiritual gifts. So I want to encourage you. You're called to do the work of the ministry. So Jesus right here is like, I'm, he's trying to get them to do the work of the ministry. He's trying to get them to do the miracle. They so said, you give them something to eat. And then what do they do? They look to their natural means. They say, we only have t- uh, two loaves, or two fish and five loaves. That's all we have. So we only have five loaves and two fish. That's it. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. So guess what? They brought them to Jesus. Now, let me just say a few things here. They were hungry too, right? The 12 disciples and Jesus, they were hungry too. Five loaves and two fish. They could have eaten these, these loaves and fish. And guess what? There wouldn't have been a harvest. All they would have had is their needs met right then and there. But instead of that, they didn't eat their, that seed. They didn't eat that, them loaves and fish. They gave them to Jesus. And it says that Jesus commanded the multitudes to sit down. God's a God of order. He likes management. He likes structure and things like that. The, the thing we've got is, is that ministry and management is always meant to serve people. People are never meant to serve ministry and management. Okay, so that's, you know, that's how it should always be. People always first. I ask the Lord, how, you know, how do I know if I'm out of balance? If you ever use your ministry, if you use people to serve your ministry, you've missed it. You always use your ministry to serve people. And I was like, yes, sir. So this, this is what Jesus was doing. He was having people sit down. Why? So that he could minister to them and they could be served. So he took the five loaves and the two fish. I'm in uh, 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 Matthew 14, verse 19. And he's looking up to heaven. He says, he blessed and broke them. Jesus took the seed, these few loaves and few fish, looked up to heaven and blessed them. In fact, if you study that out, it means he looked into the spirit realm. He looked beyond the natural. Jesus looked beyond the natural, and he knew these two loaves, uh, these five loaves and two fish could actually be multiplied and actually fulfill this need, even though it wasn't enough in the natural. I want to challenge you, church. How many times do we look at our resources and think, this is not enough? We haven't got enough. This is not enough. This is impossible. This is like having a $200,000 debt and someone giving you $5. I mean, we're talking about 5,000 hungry men, and they've got five loaves and two fish. But Jesus didn't curse the seed. He didn't say, that's not enough. In fact, in John's account, it's in the disciples say, what are so few among so many? They almost ridiculed the fact. They said, this, isn't, this is not enough. Look at, this, look at this huge crowd. This is not enough. And they cursed and disesteemed the seed rather than blessing the seed. Jesus blessed the seed. And he said, thank you, Lord, for this feed. He gave thanks to God. 
So I want to challenge you, whatever you do day by day, whatever money you have in the bank, whatever job you have, skill sets you have, thank God for it. Don't be despising who you are and what you have. I don't know about you, but sometimes we can easily look at what other people have. And it's the original sin in a way, you know, the, the enemy did this with Eve, you know. You're missing out on something, you know. If you, if you eat from that tree, you'll, then you'll be really like God. Well, she was already like God. I mean, she didn't need to eat from that tree. But it's like the FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. It's always like someone else has got something better. Someone else, if only I was like that person. If only I was like that person. And we look at people and think, you know what? If only I was like that. Right here, we can see Jesus blessed the seed. So whatever gifts you have, skills you have, job you have, whatever it is, resources you have, money you have, bless it. Say, thank you, Lord, for what I have. Paul said in Philippians 4, I've learned whatever state I'm in, whether I'm in Arizona, Texas, Colorado, whatever state I'm in, to be content. Just be content with what you have. Now, that doesn't mean you just stop there. You believe God for more. We should always be believing God for more. But be content and thank God for what you have. He's powerful. So he blessed the seed. And guess what? He gave it to the disciples. They broke it. And it says in verse 20 that they all ate. Every single one of these people ate and were completely filled. And they had baskets, 12 baskets left over. So guess what this was? This was all their needs met. The whole time, and it wasn't just like a little bit, just so they could get by. No, they ate till they were full. These are 5,000 men, it says, besides women and children. So there could have been 20,000 people there, 30,000 people there. They all ate till they were filled, and they had 12 baskets left over. God's not enough. He's more than enough. He gave more than enough. But the point being is the seed was blessed. The seed wasn't cursed. They didn't eat their seed. Sometimes we end up eating the seed. Sometimes we have a seed and you might have an amount of money at the moment. And if it's not enough to, to do what you've got to do with it, that's probably because it's seed. It's not your harvest. Me and Carly, when we first came to America, we owned a house in England, but we didn't have a house in America. So we had to save up for a down payment. Anyone been there saving up for a down payment? We saved up for a down payment. We saved up a bunch. We saved up $10,000 to start with for a down payment. And it took a lot of work. We were full-time ministers. We were, you know... People going to ministry for the money, right? Do you know that? So anyway, we were saving up for the money. It was, like, it was hard work. It was really hard work. We were semi-volunteering at the time. So we saved up $10,000. And I went to this missions banquet. And I was the speaker at this missions banquet. And there was meant to be like two or 300 people. But a snowstorm came through. So there was like five people, literally. So I felt up a sad for the missionaries. I was like, sorry, guys, you know, there's only five people. So I gave my best offering talk and everything else. And I put an offering myself. And he was friends with Oral Roberts, this missionary. And he said that Oral Roberts told him, Whenever you prayed in the Holy Ghost, have you know you should be praying in the Holy Ghost. It's powerful. Whenever you pray in tongues, whenever you pray in your spiritual prayer language, he said, whatever comes to your mind, oftentimes is God. But then we logic it out with our natural thinking. So I thought, that's a good word. So anyway, as I'm walking out of that banquet, you know where this is going, I can see. As I'm walking out of that banquet, I'm just walking down the hall, I'm just praying in the Holy Ghost. So I was like, Shabbat Santa, thank you, Lord. And I'm just praying in the Holy Ghost. And right there, the Lord said, that down payment you saved up, that $10,000, all the money we had at the time, go back and give it to that missionary. Now, you know what I did? Because I'm a great spiritual leader. I just said, I can't hear you, Lord. I was like, no, I was like, no. Must be the devil telling me to do this. No, I rebuke you. But I knew it was God. Have you known when you know it was God? So anyway, I went back and I gave him the check. When he took the check, he started crying. When he took the check away from me, I started crying. I was like, oh he said, that's the exact amount of money we need to finish building our Bible school in Myanmar. He was actually, he was a Raymond graduate building a Bible school. He was $10,000 short to finish building it. So we finished building it. I got in my truck and started driving home, and I was just praising God. I was like, God, thank you for that opportunity. I, I heard from you. I was in the right place at the right time to give that money. I heard from you. And the Holy Spirit just filled that truck in the presence of God. And he said, thank you, Ashley. God thanked me. I was like, we, I pulled over. I'm weeping. And he said, many years ago, when you first got married, 19 years old, you had no money. You couldn't pay attention. He said, you and Carly had dreams, and, and you daydreamed about what it would be like to give $1,000 what would it be like to give $10,000? What would it be like to give $100,000? We'd write checks out. Just me and Carly, no one else knew about it. And we put them, put them away. Like one day, we're going to be able to give $1,000. One day, we're going to be able to give $10,000. One day, we're going to be able to give $100,000. And, and he said, that was already on your radar. You already had that on your radar to give that money. That's why you could hear my voice, and that's why he was able to give it. Thank you. And then he also said to me, he said, he said surprise, I think I'm going to... I'm going to increase you. Don't you worry about it. Whenever you give, it's always increased. I didn't give for that reason, but I've increased. And I won't go into the whole story because I'm nearly out of time. But to put, cut a long story short, we owned our own house in Colorado Springs. We didn't, with no down payment, owned it cash. Nice house in Colorado Springs. We didn't need that $10,000. So I'm telling you, God's not trying to take from you. He's trying to get more to you. But my point being, your seed is not, if you've just got enough for a seed, that's not your harvest. And sometimes we can eat that seed. And we can spend that money or eat that seed or even speak badly over that seed instead of planting it or investing it. God wants us, God does everything through seed form. 
If I had an apple, I could take that apple and eat the whole apple and it'd be gone. That'd be it. But if I took a part of that apple out and planted it, what would happen? Eventually, apple trees would grow. And out of those apple trees would grow apples. And then I could take those apples and eat the apple, but take the seed part out and plant them, and more apple trees would grow. And it would be, guess what, exponential growth. You can't tell how many, you can tell how many seeds are in one apple. I don't know, five, ten. But you can never tell how many apples are in one seed. Because exponential growth, that's how God's kingdom works. So we're meant to take a portion of what we have and give it and sow it or invest it and things like that. Why? So that we can see that harvest. Some of us say, well, God's not, I don't see God's harvest. The reason is because you're eating the seed. And unless you're a real health person or something, seed, you know, I want to I want to sow seeds and, and eat bread. Praise God. God gives seed to the sower. Second Corinthians chapter eight, uh, you know, Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse ten says, God gives seed to the sower and bread to eat. We're meant to sow our seed and eat the bread, praise God. God's going to give us provision and, and, and things like that. So, so look after your seed. Make sure you're blessing your seed. Make sure that you're trusting God with it. Make sure you're sowing it, investing it. Don't eat it, praise God. And the last thing, real quick, in the last couple of minutes, the third thing I've got here, you're going to love this one. You're going to run around with this one. We're talking about being a, a harvest help, right? How to see your harvest. The first thing I said was don't speak death. Make sure you're speaking life. Make sure you believe him right. The second thing I said was don't eat your seed. Bless your seed, look after your seed, sow your seed. And the third thing I've got here is, ready for this? Don't be lazy. <laughs> Don't be passive. God wants you to put your hand to something. Every time I see supernatural increase in the Bible, the widow woman, she had a little bit of meal, a little bit of oil. It never ran out. She had to bake a cake. Second Kings chapter 4, the widow woman with the oil. She had to go and borrow a bunch of pots and pour that oil out, shut the door. She had to do something. The, the axe head sunk, and Elijah threw a stick in. He did something natural, and the axe head floated. The, the, uh, John 2, they run out of wine at the wedding, a very embarrassing situation. They had to fill the water pots up and, get, and hand them over, and they turned into wine. There's always a natural, at the feeding of the 5,000, they had to take these five loaves and two fish, give them to Jesus, break them up, sit the people down, and distribute them. There's always something natural. Corinthians, Second Corinthians says, first the natural, then the spiritual. There's a natural action we do. In this world, we put our hands to something in the natural, and then God puts his super to our natural and gives us supernatural results. See, many of you give, but one of the reasons you're not seeing your harvest is because you're giving devotionally to God. You're saying, God, I love you. Here's uh, uh, my tithe. Here's my offerings. I'm giving to you sacrificially. That's awesome. But we're expecting it to come back devotionally. We're expecting it to fall down from heaven or someone just walk up to us and give us a check. Now, that can happen, but 99% of the time, God's going to give back to you transactionally, meaning in the works of your hands, when you put your hand to something, when you go to work and you start honoring your, your boss and you start working hard, when you put your hand to something and start a small business, when you, when you do something and invest in, when you actually put your hand to something, the diligent soul shall be made rich. Proverbs 13.4 said, the diligent soul shall be made rich. And I'm telling you, the Proverbs 10.22, if you're making notes, Proverbs 10.22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. It's God's will for you to be rich to have enough and extra, to be able to help people, to establish this covenant. That is God's will for you. God wants you rich. That's God's will. Proverbs 2, 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich. But he also says in Proverbs 13, 4, the diligent soul shall be made rich. God's grace part is it's done. Our part is to be diligent. We be diligent. We put our hands to something, praise God. And if you want to go a step further, Proverbs eleven twenty five says the generous soul shall be made rich. I believe when we're generous... And then we're, we're putting our hand to something. We're setting ourselves up for that harvest, praise God. We're setting ourselves for that harvest. We're generous. We give devotionally. And then we put our hands to things and God gives back to us uh, transactionally. I can't tell you how many times this happened in our lives when we've put our hands to something and God's blessed it, praise God. Like I said, I can't find a supernatural increase story, Old Testament or New Testament, where they didn't have to do something in obedience with their hands first. They had to do a, a, an action first before they saw the increase. This is how it works, praise God. This is, how, this is how God's kingdom works when we do this. I'll finish with this one quick story. It's not very quick, but I'll finish. So anyway, when we went to Bible school, first of all, first year Bible school students, we had no money. Um, we got out of debt, so we, we moved across country to go to Bible school. And I, um, actually, no, it wasn't Bible school. I'm getting confused here. This is when we first started, we planted a vineyard church. So we helped plant a church. We were associate pastors. We were fresh. I mean, I was like, I think I must have been early 20s, raw. Raw is better than fresh. Okay, raw, okay. Young, green, behind the ears. I was very young, young and dumb. Now I'm just, no, anyway. So I was like, so, so anyway, I was, I was very young, and we helped plant a vineyard church, but there was no salary with this position. We had to move town to do it. So I went to get a regular job. I just went out and, got, and I found this car dealership they were hiring. So I said, I want to work for you. 
this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about putting your hand to something. I was a believer. I believed I was blessed, but I had no money. But I didn't identify as being poor. I was like, no, I'm not poor. So I went in there and I said, I'd like to work for you. They said, sure. So I started working on the lowly, um, you know, lowest level as a car salesman. You know, they, they, they tell you, you can tell how a car salesman is lying because they're moving their lips. Okay, so, but I just told the truth. I was like, you know, I'm going to be a car salesman. I'm going to tell the truth. So I, people would come up to me and say, is this got good gas mileage? That's terrible. Don't buy that car. It's terrible. So they started trusting me. So people would come in and ask for me by name. They'd say, we, we want to deal with Ashley. True story. And all the other salesmen were like, well, he's not in till, you know, tomorrow. They said, we'll come back tomorrow. So I got this reputation to be the honest car salesman. So I started getting more and more custom. Then I had this, I started praying in the Holy Ghost. I started having this idea. But what about if I was to put these cars on the internet? The internet was like fairly new then. And the bosses, the owners were like, no, that internet, that's just a fad. That's never going to work. And that's why I think if you put your cars on the internet, you could actually make extra money. And they're like, no, 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 that's just a fad. They said, what, we, what you do in your own time, you can do. So I got my own computer in my own time. I took pictures of the cars, uploaded them to a, a little website at the time that was brand new called Auto Trader. uploaded them to Auto Trader, And the next thing we know, people started coming from out of town to buy their cars. And before you know it, they had the best two months ever. Like people from all around the country were traveling to buy their cars because I'd uploaded them onto the internet. So I came into the owners. I said, hey, I said, I've been doing this for a couple of months now in my spare time. It's about time I got paid. What do you think? I said, how, how would you like to pay me? They said, no, we're not convinced. They said, this isn't going to work. They said, we don't think this is a very good idea. I said, okay. I said, um, I, so I went and packed my computer up, started packing up. And they said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just packing my computer up. They said, no, 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 let's, let's negotiate. We'll talk about this. Maybe we can give you something. We'll give you something. So, okay. So anyway, um, I was on the phone to them, uh, I don't know, two or three days later. And do you remember the old phones? Remember, people won't know this. You know, some people now, like, they're born in the 2000s. They say, they said to me the other day, was you born in the 1900s? I'm like... <laughs> So I believe there's people out there now that don't even know what old phones were, but you used to actually put the phone down. That's why I said, like, you didn't press a button, you had to put the phone down. So they put the phone down, it wasn't quite down. So I could hear them talking, the two owners of this big business, I could hear them talking, and this is what they said. They said, what are we going to do with Ashley? They said, well, we've had the best three months this, this company's ever had. They said, we can't, whatever he asked for, we give it to him. That's what they said, whatever he asked for, we'll give it to him. So I said, I've heard enough. I said, <laughs> The Lord gave me insight. The Lord gave me insight. I believe this is supernatural increase. I'm talking supernatural increase. So I walked into their office with boldness the next day. I was like, I sat down. I wanted to put my feet on the desk, but I didn't. I said, I said I've been thinking. I prayed about it. This is true. I said, I've been thinking. I said, we can't tell what car has come from the auto trader, what car has come locally. I mean, it's never really, we can ask them, but people don't. I said, how about this? I will upload all your inventory on the internet, and you give me a commission for every car sold, whether I'm here or not. They said, you're crazy. I said, no, I want a commission. Every car that's sold in this dealership, and there was like three, 400 cars, a bunch of salesmen. I said, I want a commission on every single vehicle sold, whether I'm here or not. I said, I'm going to upload them all. That's my word to you. I'll upload every car, but I want a commission. They said, we can't do that. I said, no problem. So I walk out. They called me back. And guess what? Took a few days, but we negotiated. They agreed to pay me a commission on every car sold, whether I was there or not. So I used to, about an hour a day, I'd go and take all the pictures, I'd upload them. The other seven, eight hours a day, I was ministering and, and pastoring, doing all these things, and they paid me more than a full-time salary. People said, Ashley, you're underworked and overpaid. I was like, prophesy, praise the Lord. So I did that. I did that for three years. True story, I did that for three years. And when I left, I left to go to Bible school. They begged me to stay. And they even offered to pay my house off. They said, if you stay, we'll pay your house off. I was like, I'm not staying, I'm going to Bible school. And I left and went to Bible school and God paid my house off. But anyway, my point being, that was supernatural increase. I put my hand to something. I prayed about it. I was a giver at the time. And what happened, I still am. And what happened was as you give, God's going to give you supernatural insight. He's going to give you witty inventions. He's going to give you new ways of doing things, praise God. I'm telling you, your harvest is coming. Your harvest is ready. God, I believe there's a wealth transfer happening. I believe the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. I believe the wealth of the world should be in the hands of the church, should be in the hands of believers so that we can expand the kingdom, so that we can help more people. We can give, praise God. We can get more gospel out there. We can establish God's covenant i'm telling you it takes money to help people in a big scale and i believe word life church and every one of you here can prosper so you can help more people praise god your harvest is coming make sure you speak the truth amen make sure you're saying the right things self-talk and your speech amen make sure you're blessing your seed and thanking god for your seed and make sure you're putting your hand to something whatever it is Whatever you do tomorrow, start thanking God. Say, God, thank you for my job, or thank you for my investments, or thank you for my business, and start putting your hand to something with diligence, and guess what will happen? You'll see your harvest come. Amen. Praise God. How many of you have witness? How many want to see your harvest come in 2024? How many of you praise God? Stand up. I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord.
Can I just want to join me? Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for every person here at Word Life Church. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we, we are here to seek you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that you give us, you give us insights, Lord. You give us abilities. You give us, you give us seed, Lord, to sow. And Lord, we repent of, of being small-minded. We repent, Lord, of, of speaking out the wrong things. We repent, Lord, of not believing your word. That's what it is ultimately. Lord, we repent of not believing you, Lord. Lord, you're our good father. You love us. Lord Jesus, you paid the price for us to be provided for. And right now, Lord, we believe that, Lord. We say, Lord, we believe that you are our provider. We believe that you bless us. We believe, Lord, that we we have more than enough, that you give us more than enough. You give us abundance. And Lord, we receive that harvest right now in Jesus' name. Lord, all the seeds we've sown, I thank you. Those seeds are in the ground and they're growing, Lord. They're producing a harvest. And right now, I declare over every family here, every person here, those of you that have sown, For years and years, 2024 is going to be a harvest year for you. I declare it. I thank you, Lord, that as we put our hands to things, as we thank you and put our hands to things, Lord, I thank you, we are going to see increase. I thank you, Lord, for promotions, new business ideas. I thank you, Lord, for real estate, property deals. I thank you, Lord, for for new ways of doing things, witty inventions, solutions to problems. I thank you, Lord, for, for many testimonies of people being paid for things and getting transactions done. And, and getting new contracts. I thank you, Lord, for, for grace, Lord, in these areas. I thank you, Lord, for your provision. I thank you, Lord, for ministry happening in the marketplace. Ministry in the marketplace, for people, things happening in, in people's businesses, in people's schools, in, in people, wherever people work and, and spend their days. I thank you for ministry happening in those places. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got a prayer language, just begin to use it right now. Thank you, Lord. I hear the Lord say divine appointments. There's divine appointments ready for you. They're waiting for you. But it's almost like the Lord saying He's waiting for your yes. He's waiting for your agreement. He's waiting for your open heart to say, when it comes, I'm ready to take it. I'm ready to step into it. I'm ready and obedient. Thank you, Lord, for boldness. For boldness coming upon us in this coming year. Thank you, Lord. I see someone having conversations on their journey to work. Conversations in the car with complete strangers and then talking about it afterwards and say, normally I wouldn't speak to strangers like that. I don't know what came over me. That's the Holy Ghost. He's leading you in places you haven't been before. He's leading you to step out of your comfort zone to have conversations with people you'd never otherwise talk to. Divine appointments. I see someone having a conversation with their boss who's a heathen and leading them to the Lord. Rather than complaining about your workplace environment, you're going to be the change in your workplace. You're going to be the light in the darkness. Thank you, Lord. I see Bible studies springing up in random places, in high school break rooms. We need to be praying for our young people this year. The Lord is doing something with them. The Lord is in with them, in their classrooms, with their teachers. Something's happening in sec in the secular world. They're going to be looking to us. And we need to be ready for them, ready to respond. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, Lord, here we are. Send us. Here we are. Send us. Thank you, Lord. I speak over this church an increase, an influx of fruit an influx of fruit. And I feel the Lord saying, the things that you sowed in 2023 will be the harvest season in 2024. There will be, be a return on what you have invested in the kingdom of God. Even in 23, it's going to be a harvest in 24. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There are some people here that have been believing for some very specific things. Somebody specifically for a marriage that has, has just been in danger. But the Lord has been hearing your prayers and I hear Him saying, I'm working on their heart too. I'm working on their heart too. But however this pans out, I'm with you. I'm with you. You're going to be okay. It's going to be all right. You're not on your own. 
Thank you, Lord. We just speak restoration into that relationship. For the children that have gone astray, Lord, we speak restoration into those relationships. For the marriages that have drifted, we speak restoration and unity into those relationships in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The Lord has showed me that there is someone that you have, you have a device that's implanted in your body. This is like a medical thing. The, you have something artificial inside, an implanted thing in your body. But I feel the Lord saying, you're not going to need that much longer. Because He wants to bring healing to you. He wants to bring restoration to you. So right now, whatever it is in that area, we just command functionality to return to you. Hearts to beat at a normal pace in Jesus' name. And, and pancreas is the cells to come back to life and start producing insulin like they were created to right now. Where there's metal implants in the body right now, we command them to turn back to bone, to be recreated in Jesus' name, to be reformed right now. Where there has been fusion and stiffness and immobility, we command life and peace and movement into those joints. Movement into those joints. Backs to be healed right now. Where there is pain in the body. Can you put your hand up? If you have pain in your body, put your, put your hand up where you are. Pain in the body right now. There's a number of hands up. Keep your hand up really high so I can see where you are. If you're standing around them, just lay a hand on them. The people that have pain in their body, can you just put your hands on them? I want people to have hands laid on them. We're going to come into agreement with those right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we take authority over that pain and we command it to be gone from your body now. Right now, right now, right now, in Jesus' name. We uproot those weeds of pain, those tentacles, those nerves that have become inflamed. We command them to be at peace. Body, stop reporting this pain. You are lying to us. Stop the lies right now. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Muscles, be at rest. Nerves, be at peace. We speak space between. Where there is cartilage that is missing, we command it to grow. We command it to come back to life in Jesus' name. Arthritis, be gone. Bones, be strong. Organs, function. Energy, life, vitality returning to you right now in Jesus' name. Now, if you have that pain, I want you to move, bend, stretch, do something. You know, as the lepers went, they were healed. As the man with the withered hand received his strength, he stretched out his arm. And then he noticed he was healed. As the man that was lame in his feet went to stand up and do something he could never do before, he realized, I'm healed. I don't have this affliction anymore. It doesn't belong to me. I'm not claiming it and it's not having me. And as they stepped out, they realized, check yourself. You know what? We're not looking for signs of, of pain. We're looking for signs of life. You have the life of Christ flowing through your body. Every vein, every nerve, every cell, every tendon, every muscle must respond to the Word of God. Now bend, now stretch, now, now wave and show me if you know something's changed in your body just then. Something's changed in your body just then. Look at these hands. Something's changed in these bodies. Here they are, here they are, here they are, here they are. Thank you, Lord. That's the healing power of God flowing through your body. Amen. And it doesn't stop when you leave here. It doesn't stop. If you had a laundry list of conditions, it doesn't stop with one. It's already moving in your body. It's going to touch everything. It's going to touch everything. Hallelujah. We believe and we receive. Can we give the Lord some praise? Thank you, Jesus. He's so good. Praise the Lord. Hey, if you was one of the ones that held your hand up, hold your hand up if you felt a difference in your body. Something's changed in your body right now. Something's changed right now in your body. That's awesome. Come to the front right now, quickly. The people that had their hands up, come to the front. If you had your hands up and said something's changed in your body, come to the front right now. Don't be shy. We won't buy it. I promise. Come to the front right now. Praise the Lord. We're just going to take a couple of minutes. Ready? Just... Hey, okay. You can be seated the rest of you. Praise God. You can be seated. Come to the front here. And turn Here's what we're going to do. No preaching. I'm just going to ask you what happened. What happened before and after? So turn around. Face the people. What happened? What happened? How was you before? Stiff. How are you now? I feel so free. 
How long have you felt stiff for? 13 months. 13 months. You've been like this for 13 months. And how are you now? I feel good. Is there something you could, you could do that you couldn't do before? What? Come on. Hey, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Could you do that before? You couldn't do that before? She's healed, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. She's healed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What happened? Yeah, I had pain in my leg. Pain in your leg. How long have you had pain in your leg for? About three days. I was working at the Gospel Truth Conference and I had bad pain. I feel so much better. The pain gone? It's gone. Come on, do something. How's it? Any pain? No pain. Hallelujah. Healed. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. What happened? Um, normally, I walk the hospital all night and the last months I've been thinking about quitting my job because it's starting to be debilitated when I get up in the morning everything hurts so I've been like hesitant to go to the doctor about it but today I literally fled to church because I was trying to like get up and walk my back hurt my knees hurt joints just hurt and I literally like as soon as you said to put your hands up like I literally I felt the snap and then literally like it was gone literally any pain now? No. Do something you couldn't do. Show us. Do something. A any pain? No. Was there pain before? Yes. And any pain now? No. No pain. She's healed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. What happened? Um, I just have been having this, like, underneath my eye headache for, like, three days. A headache underneath your eyes for three days? And I, I was prayed for, and I just felt tingly, and now it's gone. You felt tingly, now it's gone. Any pain? No. No pain at all. You're healed, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What happened? Um, I was standing there, but I've been dealing with a couple of years now for a lower back pain. And if I sit, sit or stand too long, it just starts to hurt. And as I was praying, um, I started literally feeling something hard just shifting on my lower back. And then I was feeling actually a pain in my upper neck. And I felt pastor put his hand there. It immediately was gone. Pain now. No. Move your neck around. Do something. How's it feel? How's your back? Any pain? No. She's healed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's awesome. Hey, George. What happened? Uh, pain in my upper neck. You know, area has been bothering me for the last year. A year of pain in your upper neck. Yeah. You know, pain in the neck. Right. And That's the devil. He's a pain in the neck. That's right. That's right. And you know, uh, my wife and Alan uh, laid hands on me, and I felt some just like warm release. You know, feels good. How's it now? Moved it around, does that? Any pain? Hallelujah, he's healed. Thank you, Jesus. When you stand up and give Jesus some praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let me just say this real quickly. If you didn't, if you didn't feel anything in your body, that doesn't mean you're not healed. Praise God. You know what? People believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. And I can't tell you how many times as people leave the church, they feel something in their body or the next day or the next week or whatever. God's God's will for you is to be healed instantaneously every time. But even Jesus had to pray for someone twice, right? So don't dig up the seed and say, it didn't work for me. It worked for those guys. It didn't work for me. No, believers laid hands on the sick and you are healed, praise God. You are healed in Jesus' name. So why don't you thank God like you're healed? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. We're going to have the guest service team hand out the envelopes for Teradev's ministries. How many of you were blessed today? How many of you want to be a part of sending that type of word and that type of powerful healing demonstration everywhere they go? You know, it's awesome to, to sow into their, their ministry today. It's better to partner with them and be a part of what they're doing everywhere they go. So I'm, I'm not saying don't sow today. Sow today, but really consider coming alongside of them from now on. You know, partners catch more fish. And it's our heart's desire. Terrell and I are, are partner with the Terry Dez ministry. I know a lot of you are. That's the greater impact. Let's come alongside of them and partner with what they're doing and see God bless others in the body of Christ like you were blessed today. Amen.